So a Bloodborne randomizer is essentially just Bloodborne without the logic, consistency, or playability. Shit's all over the place, and I don't even know what's going on half the time. But what I do know is this, all the enemies, items, bosses, gems, runes, and even the shop are all random. But that's not all. I wanted to make things a little bit more interesting, so I also increased the scaling for each area on top of that. As a result, this should be a much harder playthrough. Well, either that or I just bricked it. Guess there's only really one way to find out. So, for our first randomized enemy, we got a handstanding villager. Now, I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty random. But once we take that clown out, we can just exit the building and get our first randomized item. Okay, cool, fun's over. Now comes one of the hardest decisions I'm gonna have to make in this entire playthrough. What weapon am I gonna pick? See, the starting melee weapons have also been randomized, so I need to take my time, think it through, and make a logic- Okay, scratch everything I just said, that's not even up for debate. So, okay, cool, that's the easy part done apparently. Now I've actually got to play the game, which isn't so bad. Yes, you can literally encounter anything, but the beginning stuff should be around your level. Except for that blob. It's a very strong blob. Oh, and that thing over there. Almost forgot to mention that. See, I didn't talk about this before, but bosses can replace enemies and spawn throughout the world. So as you can only imagine, in built up areas like this, you're going to encounter a few of them. Plus, that's not the only problem. See, a lot of the time, enemies will spawn in areas that are just like, way too small for them, and you'll often end up in situations like this. Yes, 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 yes! Get me through, get me in! Get me out! No, 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 no. Aw, oh, you kidding me. You wanna know one thing that's really good about a randomized shop? You can buy blood rocks for 10 echoes apiece. So I'm gonna buy 20. Do I need 20? I don't know, maybe I need to upgrade uh, 20 different weapons. Now the shop does giveth, but it also giveth you the middle finger because 50,000 for a sword spear. In this economy? Really? Now I think this is also the perfect time to take on the first boss. So who did we get? We got Murgo's Wet Nurse. Now look, I'm just gonna say it. I'm shocked that I can actually deal damage against it. Shocked, I tell you. See, I'm just waiting for that scaling to bite me in the ass. But don't worry, I have faith that it'll try to fuck me over when I least expect it. Thankfully, that time isn't now, as I was able to take Mogo down on my first attempt. Now that's good and all, but it's also time for the second boss. So when I entered the arena, I instantly got splattered in the face. So that means I got the queen. But hey, no big deal, she's pretty easy. So yeah, like Mogo, this is gonna be uh, one and done. That was until I remembered that this is a two-stage fight. Oh, 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 oh. Excuse me? So, out of anything I could have gotten, and I mean anything, I got second stage Orphan of Koss. Few words come to mind. Beautiful. Fantastic. Fuck and me. Now, of course, I don't deal any damage against him, that goes without saying, and he just about two shots me. But it's not like I'm out of options. I could just brute force it, aka the slam your head against a brick wall strategy, or power level a bunch, aka the pussy strategy. Now, both of those things require effort, and I prefer to work smart, not hard. So with that in mind, I came up with another strategy entirely. See, I found out if you stand up here, Koss's line of sight will be broken. When that happens, his IQ drops from a 1 to a 0. So basically, he just starts running into a wall, which also seems to be the perfect opportunity to backstab him. Now, yes, if you do that, it will also unlodge him from the wall. But then again, you can just repeat the same process as many times as you want. So I did, and that's how I bet him. You know what? I take it back. That was the pussy strategy. But with that boss out of the way, I can now get access to the Blood Gem Station. However, it's useless. I can't even upgrade my weapon yet, because basic resources like blood shards are harder to find than diamonds. Plus, I don't have any gems that are compatible. So there is that. But that's okay, because the shop should have some new inventory. You know what? 50,000 really isn't that bad. I mean, all I have to do in order to get that is just kill this defenseless creature a couple of times. I'd say that's a pretty small price to pay. Oh, and let's just all forget that I invested into this 10 minutes prior. No one saw that. It never happened. But anyway, up until this point, I'd say things have been uh, pretty straightforward and easy, but you can just throw that all out the window because now it's time for old Yarnum. And this place has it all. I'm talking flying swords. I'm talking clusterfucks. 
With pigs, I might add. Way too many pigs. Oh, what's that? You're trying to climb a ladder? Can't let that happen. And don't even get me started on fighting in the rafters. Wait, you know what? Maybe that one ain't so bad. But seriously, watch out for the ladders. The game will go through great lengths to throw literally anything it can at you. But after we trudge our way through all that bullshit, we can finally make it to the next boss. Maria. Huh. This shouldn't be too bad. So you remember when I said that I was waiting for the scaling to bite me in the ass? Well right about now it's taken a chunk out and it's coming back for more. I deal next to no damage and I have the vitality of a senior citizen. Now the key is to even out the playing field without making it too easy. So I had an idea. Since the blood gems have also been randomized, they all have some insane effects. But this one in particular is pretty interesting. The first thing it does is convert your damage to fire, which does unfortunately destroy a lot of your damage output, so that's the bad. But on the other hand, it has this effect. Every time you perform a visceral attack, you gain 300 health. Now since the boss is Maria, you can actually parry the majority of her attacks. So if I was to equip this gem and continually parry her, I, in theory, should never run out of health, I should have infinite ammo, and I will also be able to deal a respectable amount of damage. Now the downsides to that idea is that I can still be two shot, and in some cases, one shot. Plus, I've said this before, the gem also converts my damage, so I can only really deal damage from parries. Not to mention, if I do this, I pretty much have to hit all my viscerals. Then again, how hard can that be? Okay, with Maria gone, I can finally take that thorn out of my side and move on to the next area. Now, I think this is probably the best time to pick up the first piece of the umbilical cord. However, the jump is proving to be harder than any boss I've fought so far. But after a few attempts, I finally overcame that colossal hurdle and was able to pick up the first piece of the cord. But with that, I think we should not waste any time and move straight on to the next boss. Now for this one, I actually got pretty lucky. It's just some generic chalice boss, no big deal. And look, I'm gonna allow myself to enjoy this, 
because I know what's coming after this one and it ain't gonna be anywhere near as fun. Speaking of which, in order to get to the next couple of bosses, I have to go through this massive, decrepit forest. And this place is stacked. If it ain't the wildlife or random roaming bosses that'll get you, it'll be this guy. And maybe whatever that is. Uh, okay. Now, you want to know something pretty cool? Vault paper only costs 10 echoes. Isn't that just dandy? Now, the last thing I want to do before I take on the next boss would have to be getting the last of the upgrading materials. This is going to be huge, but getting what I need is proving to be much harder than I originally thought. Everything is out to get me, no one is dropping the right materials, and half the time, I'm dying to things that aren't even sentient. But look, it was all worth it, because in the end, I finally found what I was looking for. So let's return and upgrade our weapon. <laughs> That's always so f funny. Okay, so I'm gonna level with you. I've been avoiding the witches for a while now, but I have a very good reason for that. See, when I first made this randomizer, I had a choice whether or not I wanted to make certain boss fights easy. Now these boss fights were the witches, shadows, emissary, Rom and the failures. Now, all these bosses are similar in that they aren't simple 1v1s. However, the easy mode for these fights would have made them as such. And look, if a randomizer gives you the option of an easy mode, chances are you're probably gonna wanna take it. However, I didn't. Shocker. Now, I bring this up because I'm having, how do you say, a little bit of a hard time with the witches. Allow me to describe it to you. I have to beat two bosses, the Watchdog and Lawrence. Now, if you didn't know, the Witch Arena is incredibly small, and both of these bosses are pretty big, so there is that. Now, that's fine and all if you're able to play around their attacks, but here's the thing. They are also invisible 90% of the time, or they are until you're about 2 inches away from their faces. And look, I wish that was the end of it, but the list just keeps on going. They also res each other after a certain period of time, and there's also a lot of trash mobs in the arena as well. So they will often stagger you while you're trying to attack one of the bosses, which pretty much just cancels anything you're trying to do. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, they respawn as well. I think this is the first time where I feel that I have no other option but to level up. Now, don't get me wrong, I deal decent damage, but I'm extremely fragile. Now, an easy way that I've found to get myself a bunch of levels is just to travel to Central Yarnum and kill both Rom and the Emidala. At this point, they're pretty easy to take out, and since they're both bosses, they should give me a buttload of echoes. And once I have enough, I'm just gonna invest it all straight into health. And this did definitely even out the playing field. So now instead of getting two shot, I get three shot, which is a massive improvement. Still hard, but at least now it's actually doable. Now I hate to say this, but that was just the prelude. See, the witches were hard, but doable. The shadows, on the other hand, well about that. So, uh, yeah, that just went about as you would expect it. So I got Murgo's Wet Nurse, Second Stage Ludwig, and Second Stage Gasquin. These three just amalgamate into an impossible fight. See, each boss complements one another. The nurse stays back and shrouds the arena. Then you are going to be constantly dove by Gasquin, who will stick to you like cement. All the while, Ludwig is in the background, attacking you from a distance. Every base is covered, and there is never a moment where you are not getting railed from every angle. Now that would be fine and all if it wasn't for the staggering. If I'm trying to attack one of the bosses, I'm going to be consistently harassed by the other two, which as you can imagine, will just cancel any attempt that I try to make. I think it's safe to say that this fight is impossible, and I think if either Ludwig or Gaskin was traded out for another boss that was either a little bit slower or less aggressive, it would have been much easier. But in this fight, I legitimately cannot do anything. Now, unlike the witches, this fight isn't optional. Great. But that doesn't mean there isn't another way around it. There is a skip. But like everything, there's a catch. See, I'm playing on 60 FPS, so this skip might honestly be harder than the boss fight. But it's worth a try. 
Now there are two stages to this skip, getting up to the ledge and jumping through the tree. Now getting up to the ledge is usually pretty easy, all I would have to do is run jump up this route. But as you can see, 60 FPS turns it into a slip and slide, so that ain't gonna work. Thankfully there is another way. I just have to walk up to here and jump on top of the gravestones. Then I need to get to the highest point possible and perform a run jump up the hill. This is tricky normally, but on 60 FPS, you gotta be damn near perfect. But once you make it, this only leaves us with one more thing. I need to perform a very specific run jump in order to pass through this tree. Now, I did this for two hours straight. Shit's impossible. So screw it. I recreated the randomizer patch using the same settings, but removed the 60 FPS. So once I boot my save back up, everything should be the same. Now on 30 FPS, I did the jump in two attempts. I wish I was joking. But now I can just enter the arena and take out all my frustration on these defenseless idiots. And look, I normally wouldn't have done it this way, but it was impossible, and honestly, they kind of deserve it. Now, I wish I could say that that was the end of the brutally hard fights, but if I did, I'd be lying. There is just one more. Rom. Now, unlike the shadows, there ain't any skip for this one. So depending on what I get, it could seriously be the end of the run right now. So, what did we get? While well, looking around, it seems that there are a few groups of enemies. Now, they don't all trigger at once. They'll do that periodically throughout the fight. Kinda like how the spiders would in the normal fight. Now, the first group beyond the first encounter will always be active. And this group does consist of some decently strong trash enemies, but the main two would have to be German and his watchdog. And these two will only ever hunt as a pair. Now, the acting boss of this fight does seem to be German. However, just getting to him is proving to be a task in and of itself. The best way that I've found is to take out all the trash first and play around the watchdog, but I have to be sure not to attack it too much. The moment it enters stage 2, the fight is over. It becomes way too aggressive, and finding both German and second stage watchdog is a nightmare. It is honestly just easier playing around stage 1. Now, as I've said before, periodically the other groups of enemies will become hostile. So before I can even attempt to fight German, there is one other boss that I have to take out first and that would have to be this guy right here. See, Gasquin is in the first group of enemies they will become hostile, and I'm having major PTSD flashbacks from the Shadows fight. There is no way I'm gonna be able to take him on, German, and the Watchdog. So he's gotta go first. But after that, for the rest of the fight, you just gotta play defensively, kite around the Watchdog, and trade with German. Now you do have to watch out for the other enemies as well, because they will sneak up on you when you least expect it. But over time, you can slowly chip away at German's health. This is a long fight, and it's a fight of patience. But with a little bit of luck, I was finally able to take him down. So I think this is a better time than ever to start ticking off a few of the more optional boss fights in preparation for the DLC. I'm talking Marta, Emi Dala, and maybe Mikolash as an added bonus. So first, we make our way to Castle Kanus. Now this place is completely deceiving. You'll be walking along, minding your own business, and then this happens. Now, the boss fight on the other hand is pretty straightforward. One may even say brain dead easy. But you know what? I'll take that. This list will serve as my therapy session for the last three fights. Wait, you know what? I was so focused on clearing out the bosses that I completely forgot something. I might want to go pick up the second piece of the cord before I forget it. Shut up, bitch. Next up after that, we got the Amidala. And once we make our way through the screaming halls of the lecture building, we can just beeline it straight to the boss fight. Now this may actually be the easiest one by far, but as I've said before, I'm gonna enjoy it while it lasts, because something big is coming and I can feel it. But anyway, next up on our list is our buddy Pal. Now the trek to him can be a little bit long, but it also provided me with an understanding, to the fullest extent, the chaotic nature of the randomized enemies. If they aren't defiling the nature of the game's code just to fuck me over, they'll start fucking each other over. There is a pecking order in this game, and you'd be surprised who's at the bottom. As for the boss fight itself, there's something about Amelia that always rubs me the wrong way. I don't know if it's the excessive healing or screaming, but it never ceases to do my damn head in. You know what, since I'm already here, might as well do the reborn fight as well. 
Now this one is definitely pretty interesting, but before we get to the bosses themselves, you, like normal, have to clear out all the enemies first. Once that's done though, I can pretty much just start to wail on the moon presence. See, I originally thought that the guy speaking in tongues and throwing shit at me was the boss, but he's not. Now, I really want to say that he's just there for decoration, but honestly, he's going to be one of the main things keeping you on your toes. There's pretty much never a moment where he's not throwing something at you, and if you don't watch yourself, it can combo really well with this move. But anyway, the one we're born, you can now take that off the list. Next up is the Celestial Emissary. Now getting to it is a journey in and of itself. Now I'd like to reiterate, these bosses are way too big for these small areas. They are literally taking up the entire walkway. But anyway, as for the boss, this will be the second last group boss fight that I'll have to do. And of course, out of everything I could have gotten, I got Orphan. Who else? But on the plus side though, I did also get Rom with no other bosses. So I'll just take this as a blessing in disguise. Then again, everything else really isn't making this much easier. Now, I don't know if it's the dementia kicking in or what, but I completely forgot that this is a two-stage fight. So when I got him halfway, Ligarius just pops up like everything is normal. And this was the moment where I wanted to put my head through a wall. The amount of times I almost died to him and all the other crap in the arena? Nah, they gotta go. And yes, it will only be temporary because everything respawns, but it was enough time for me to be able to take the boss down. Or at least I thought it was. Now, for a reason that's beyond my own limited comprehension, the boss was still alive when I traveled back to the arena. I have absolutely no idea why. But once I take him down a second time, we can tick that off the list and head straight to a Breeders. Now, for this fight, I got Pal. And he is probably one of the most brittle bosses in this entire game. I couldn't imagine why. He's pretty much a picture of health. Now, I think I might as well take out Mikalash before I take on the DLC. However, before we do that, there is one other thing I kind of want to try. I remember that there was a brand of Mensis in the sewer, so I tried to make contact with it to see if that would work. But it doesn't. So, time for the Nightmare of Mensis, I guess. Okay, so right about now, there's only really three more non-optional boss fights. But before we take them on, I might as well just do the DLC and clear out the rest of the bosses first. But before that, I think we should go check on Lawrence. Now, I'm not gonna lie, he's half the boss he used to be. Now, you wanna know a fun little fact? The only thing I've died to so far in this DLC has been a wheelchair. I wish I was joking, but it's also kind of impressive. But let's not let that distract us from our next boss fight, Ludwig. Wait, why is there a pig in the arena? You want- no, I'm not even going to question it. Now since I got Rom, that means the first stage is going to be a freebie. But this is also a two-stage fight, and we also got the Amy Dala. So that means the second stage is also a freebie. Look, I don't know what it is about this boss fight in small areas, but it always just seems to freak out, rip its own arms off, and starts attacking the wall. It's a... Uh, very confusing. On the upside though, I now have 100,000 Echoes. And the first thing I'm going to do with this is buy a few potions and they're gone. They're all gone. Moving on. Now just before we move on to the next boss, I think it's appropriate to try and understand what the fuck is going on here. It uh, appears the floor is gone on account of it not being there anymore. Surely this isn't some kind of weird sign for what's to come. Nah, surely not. But anyway, I think it's about time we take on the living failures. Now, if I could sum this fight up in four words, it'd probably be this. Harder than the shadows. I mean, it's pretty much just the shadows plus one. And as you can imagine, it's even more impossible. 
Now comes the question. How do we get past this? That's a very good question. I have no idea. See, there really isn't any skip for this boss because, well, there really isn't a need for one. If you know what you're doing in this fight, you can do it incredibly quickly. Now, that's good and all, but it doesn't really help me out. And I've looked up, down, left, right, everywhere, but it just seems that there really isn't any way to bypass the fight. So I was about to give up. That was until I watched this video here by Lobos. See, he was also doing a Bloodborne randomizer, and since he's a very skilled Souls player, I kind of wanted to see how he did the failures fight, but that's when something interesting happened. He was experiencing some funkiness, like the floor disappearing, as it does from time to time. So he was pretty much unable to continue the fight, so we just saved and exited so he can redo it, hopefully this time with the floor intact. But something weird happened. He spawned inside the arena, and what this allowed him to do is walk straight up to the boss and take it out. That is how he bet the fight. So, okay, cool. I now have a way to beat this fight. If I can recreate what he did, hopefully I can get the same result. Now, after some playing around, I figured it out. Now, you're probably thinking it's some really weird, obscure thing, but it's actually incredibly straightforward. All you have to do is walk up to the locked clock tower door and interact with it. Then all you have to do is move to the side of the building here and save an exit. That's it. Once you boot it back up, you'll spawn inside the arena against a defenseless boss. So, all I gotta say is, thank you Lobos for saving the run. So, with the failures taken out, there is no more group boss fights. Thank f for that. So that means it's pretty smooth sailing from here. Now for the Maria fight, we got Pal again. And it went just how you'd expect. It's less powerful and threatening than a wheelchair. Now what that means is there's only one more boss fight left in this DLC. And it just so happens to be at the end of this cave. And the game just blue screened. Huh, that's odd, but whatever it happens. As I was saying, it's just at the end of this... Again? Let's try a different way. Great. Well, time to dig out the speedrunning strats again. Now, thankfully, there is another way around this. However, it's tricky. And again, 60 FPS. What I have to do is roll off this roof and exit in the exact moment I hit the ground. If I lift, I'll be able to walk up to this spot here and do a fast run turn into the rock. If everything worked correctly, I should be near the end of the cave and past the blue screen zone. So after all that, let's wrap up this DLC. So who did we get? We got the Moon Presence. It's weak, but it's also a pretty fitting end for the DLC. But with its death, means that there is only three more bosses left. Murgo, German, and the Moon Presence fight. With all the pain I went through in this randomizer, I think I'm gonna enjoy this last part.
Wait, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh yeah, I forgot to do Lawrence. 